Okay, chapter 7 was all about the mathematical idea of similarity. We talked about similar figures, and basically there were two shapes that had the same shape, but different sizes. Okay, so real-world examples, we talked about scale drawings, we talked about scale models. Okay, again, same shape, different size. And mathematically what that means is that those two shapes have angles that are congruent, so the angles are equal to each other, and then the sides are proportional. Okay, the scale factors of the sides are going to be equal to each other. Okay, so let's take a look at some problems that deal with similarity. Okay, our first problem doesn't actually deal with similarity, but it does deal with ratios, something important for that idea. Okay, so let's take a look at it. It says the three angles of a triangle are in the extended ratio 2 to 4 to 6. What's the measure of the largest angle? Okay, anytime we have a ratio, or in this case an extended ratio, what we have is just a way to compare the sizes of two or three quantities. And the trick for this type of problem is anytime we know the ratio and we know what things add up to, we can set up an equation. Using those numbers from the ratio, I'm going to say that 2x plus 4x plus 6x is equal to. Okay, and here what I did is I just took kind of the numbers from the ratio or basically the scale factor from that ratio and attached an x to each of those numbers. Okay, since we're talking about angles of a triangle, I know that all three angles should add up to 180 degrees. So we can set up 2x plus 4x plus 6x equals 180. Okay, and then solving this equation, 2 plus 4 plus 6 is going to give us 12. So we have 12x is equal to 180. And then divide both sides of that equation by 12, we end up with x is equal to 15. Okay, notice multiple choice time, 15 is a solution here. Okay, a lot of students can be tempted to, hey, we got a number, we got the answer, circle that. Okay, don't do that, especially in geometry. Take a look at what we're trying to solve. In problem one, I want to know what the measure of the largest angle is. Okay, we found x. x has, isn't an angle, it's just kind of a scale for this problem. The largest angle is going to correspond with this 6 from the ratio, so 6x from our equation. So for that largest angle, we're going to go 6 times 15 okay, instead of 6 times x, which gives us 90 degrees. Okay, so we get 90 degrees for the measure of that largest angle. Okay, problem two does deal with similarity now. Okay, and here we're talking about a scale drawing of a garden and an actual drawing. We'd say that the scale drawing and the real world garden are similar to each other. Again, same shape, different sizes. Okay, two says you're making a scale drawing of a garden using the scale two inches equals 17 feet. If the length of the row of vegetables on the drawing is three inches, how long is the actual row? Okay, here we're going to use the fact that similar figures or similar objects are proportional to each other. So we're going to set up proportions. I'm going to look at the proportion of the scale to the actual. Okay, scale drawing to the actual. The scale we're given here is 2 inches, and the drawing is going to equal 17 feet in the actual garden or in real life. Then I'm given if the length of a row of vegetables on the drawing is 3 inches. Okay, so in our drawing we'd say this is equal to 3 inches over, we want to know how long is the actual row. We'll call that our x. And here we have a proportion that we can set up and solve for x, figure out what the actual length should be. Okay, now this is one way to set things up. There's other ways to set up this proportion. The big thing is that we keep things in line. Here I have scales across the top, actuals across the bottom. As long as you do that, you'll get a correct solution. Okay, solving proportions, we cross multiplied and divided. So cross multiplying, when I take my 2 inches times x, I end up with 2x is equal to other cross multiple, 17 times 3, that's going to be 51. And notice as I'm doing this, I'm not worried about the 
unit we're talking about, inches or feet, the multiplication will take care of that with our proportion. Okay, cross multiply, then divide. Divide both sides by 2. We end up with x is equal to 25.5 feet. Okay, so 25.5 feet is our answer. Looks like B here. And again, with proportions, you don't need to worry about the units. The units take care of themselves. In problem three, we have another problem dealing with similar figures. This one says in the triangles below, triangle ACE is similar to triangle BCD. What's the measure of segment AE? Okay, so we want to figure out how long AE is here. And we know that triangles ACE and triangles BCD are going to be similar to each other. Okay, we'll talk about more in a second you know, why these two triangles are similar, um, how we know. Uh, for now, we'll just set up the proportion and solve. Okay, so we'll start off with the red triangle. I know the bottom side length, which is going to be 30 plus 20, so 50. Okay, over the side length I don't know, AE. We'll just call that AE for now. Okay, we can say that's equal to the corresponding sides. The corresponding side for my smaller triangle, BCD, is going to be 20. Okay, over the vertical side we do know, which is 16. Okay, so here's our proportion again. We can cross multiply. And cross multiplying, 50 times 16 is going to give me 800. So I could say 800 is equal to 20 times AE. Or we can call that x if we want. Either way, divide both sides by 20. We end up with AE is equal to 40. Okay, so it looks like option C, 40 centimeters. Okay, big thing with a problem like this is just matching up the corresponding sides. And notice I had to make an adjustment because it didn't give me this side EC. I had to do some addition okay, to make sure that that 50 matched up with the 20. Okay, our next problem, problem four, deals with similar triangles once again. And before we get into this one, I want to quickly review how we know triangles are similar to each other or how we can prove they're similar. We had three theorems. <clears throat> First one was the angle-angle similarity theorem. It just said that if we had two triangles with two angles congruent to each other, we knew the triangles were similar. Okay, another one was the side-side-side similarity. That said if we have two triangles with all three sets of sides proportional, so if all three sets of sides have the same scale factor, then we know they're similar. <clears throat> and then the last one was side-angle-side that said that if we have two triangles with a pair of angles congruent to each other and the sides that include them, so AB over XY is proportional to AC over XZ, okay, then we know the triangles are similar also. As far as which ones we'll use, the angle angle is the one that gets used the most often, and that'll be what we use in this next problem here. <clears throat> okay, so problem four says on a sunny day, a tall oak tree casts a 14-foot-long shadow. At the same time, a 6-foot-tall person casts a 2.25-foot-long shadow. We want to know how tall is the oak tree. Okay, so let's sketch this out here. We have an oak tree and a person. Okay, we know the person is 6 feet tall. And we're not sure how high the oak tree is. That's what we want to solve for. We know they both cast a shadow. The oak tree's shadow is 14 feet. And the person's shadow is 2.25 feet. Okay, and the trick for this problem is we want to make a triangle out of the top of the oak tree to its shadow, top of the person to its shadow. Both these are going to be right triangles. <clears throat> and then how this relates to similarity is that if I have the sun up here, which is making those shadows, the angle of elevation of the sun in both those cases is going to be equal. As long as we do this measurement at the same time of day, 
Okay, so by angle, angle, I have two similar triangles. Okay, so triangles are similar, meaning we can set up a proportion. I can say that x over 14 is equal to 6 over 2.25. Cross multiply, we end up with 2.25x is equal to 84. Okay, divide both sides by 2.25, we end up with x is equal to 37.3 repeating. Okay, so how tall is the oak tree? We'll round that to 37 feet. Okay, so another similarity problem. This time we're able to use one of our triangle shortcuts okay, to confirm that they are similar before we set up our proportion. Okay, we have one more problem, and that's going to deal with proportions in triangles. Okay, and we had two different theorems about those, so copy these down. First one was the side splitter theorem. It said that if I have a triangle okay, and we split the sides with parallel lines, so in this triangle here, we have a segment DE going through the triangle that's parallel to the base AB. That means that our triangle is going to get split up proportionally. It says that DC over DA is going to be equal to CE over EB. Okay, and then our second was that the angle bisector theorem, it said that if we have a triangle with a segment that bisects an angle, cuts it into two equal parts, Okay, then similarly, AC over AD will be equal to CB over BD. The triangle will be split up proportionally. Okay, so let's apply that now. Problem 5 says the diagram below shows three campsites on Perch Lake okay, with boundaries parallel to one another. So three campsites with their boundaries all parallel. Okay, kind of like lots being split up. Okay, find the length of the three sides along the lake. Okay, so we want to figure out this distance right here. We know two of those parts. To do that, we're going to have to figure out our x here. And to do that, we can use an extended side splitter theorem. If I extend this figure out into a triangle, okay, we have parallel lines going through it. Okay, we're able to set up our proportion with the side splitter theorem. Okay, I'm able to set up that x over 9 is equal to 8 over 7.2. Can I have to use the 8, 7.2? I can't use the 6.4 because I don't know what this corresponding side is. I suppose we could solve for it, but we don't know it right off the bat. Cross multiply, divide, we end up with x is equal to 10. Okay, x equals 10, but again, that's not our answer. We want this entire distance here. So that'll be 10 plus 8, which is 18, plus 6.4 will give us a 24.4. Okay, so nice little application of those two theorems we just gave you with a little bit of problem solving involved as well.